Hello everybody, this is Tekka. In this video, what I'm gonna be doing is updating my post installation guide for Fedora. So this is gonna run down some steps to help you improve the general usability, speed, package availability, and all that within your new Fedora installation. This right here is a completely fresh install of Fedora 36. If I go up here, you can see my last notification. Welcome to Fedora 36. Now, even if you've had this installed for a little while, you may find some of this helpful and especially the first thing that we're gonna cover, which is the DNF configuration options. DNF, if you don't know, is the package management system within Fedora, and it is notoriously slow. But luckily there are some things that we could do to try to help increase the speed and performance of DNF. So first things first, we're gonna open up the terminal and we're gonna to go to sudo nano into the Etsy TNF and open up the DNF conf. And doing this in nano is gonna be the terminal based text editor. Go to enter, type in your password. And if you're somebody who's not used to using the terminal, we're not doing anything too crazy here. It's basically just a text editing application. What I'm gonna do is type in a little comment. I'm gonna do added for speed. And I'm gonna paste in some things which you can find in the description of this video. Now, before we go ahead and actually add anything, it's kind of important to understand what all these different options are and what we are adding. And additionally, I'm gonna be linking to this webpage in the description. This is your DNF configuration reference. And right here under main and options, this is all the different options and things that you can add to your DNF configuration. So it's important to kind of go through this and see if there's anything that might work best for your particular situation. So for example, something we're about to be adding is right here, fastest mirror. We're gonna have that equal to true. And you can see it gives you a little description if an able to metric will be used to find the fastest available mirror or repository for where you're downloading packages. And this will override the order provided by the mirror list and made a link file itself. So that's just one example. So if you want to really learn more about what you're doing here, that is a wonderful resource, but I'm gonna go ahead and paste in these four additional options. Fastest mirror, which we just said is true. Uh, initially, this will actually slow down everything because it's gonna actually have to spend some time looking for that fastest mirror. But after your first update or whatever, going forward, it will be much better. Max parallel downloads. How many different things can it download at the same time? For me, I set it to 10 because I have gigabit internet. It's gonna be perfectly fine. If you're running like 10 make down or something like that, you might want to switch this to five or even three. But for me, a 10 is going to be perfect. Default equals or default yes equals true. I like this because I'm used to Arch or Ubuntu Debian systems, where if you install something and it asks you to confirm your action, the default is Y, so all you need to do is hit enter. On Fedora, the default is no. I don't like that. That's why I switch it to true. Uh, some people in the previous video said that that's unsafe. I disagree. Next up, we have keep cache equals true. This will cache the downloaded packages. So for future reference, it will be a little bit quicker. Now, all you need to do once you input these is go control O, enter control X, and now you've updated your DNF configuration. So after the first update or first software installation, it will be substantially quicker. Still not the quickest, DNF isn't the best, but it will be much better. And for those of you worried about keeping things cached, something that you could do to clear your cache occasionally is just do a sudo DNF clean, and we could do a uh, BB cache, so that will clean the cache, or we could do a sudo DNF clean all if we want to. If I hit that, you could see zero files removed because I haven't even used it yet. And now once we have DNF configured, we can actually begin updating our system. A lot of people say to update your system first, but I like to just do those uh, DNF configuration options real quick because it will just speed up everything in the future. So let's do a sudo DNF update, hit enter, and it's gonna go through everything. And you can see right here, it says determining fastest mirror. And it's gonna do that for every single repository. So it's gonna take a little bit longer in this first update. There we go, it's done. And since I did just update this from 35, it is gonna be completely up to date. But if you're doing this from a fresh install, you will have some updates. So now from there, what we're gonna to want to do is enable RPM Fusion. And what this is going to do is give us much more accessibility to various software packages that aren't in these uh, Fedora repositories by default. An example, if I go over to our software center, and let's say we wanted to find OBS Studio, a very popular application. 
Uh, it's not going to come up. OBS, OBS-Studio, it's, it's not here. So what you can do is go over to this website. This is the official rpmfusion.org website. Here you're going to find a lot of instructions, links, and resources to learn more about this. For us, we're going to go under four users and enable RPM Fusion on your system. Now there are two different RPM Fusion repositories. You have the free, which is open source software, and you have non-free, which will uh, redistribute software that is not open source. For example, some proprietary media codecs, drivers, things like that. Now you can do this through a graphical setup with your GUI software installer, but the easiest way to do this is go down here to the command line setup using RPM, and we're gonna go Fedora with DNF. So we're just gonna give this command a copy right here. So copy that, and then we're gonna jump back over to our terminal here, paste that on in, and hit enter. So from here you can see what it's going to install, both the free and the non-free repositories. And like I was talking about earlier, is this okay? The default is Y instead of no. So I could simply just hit enter and then it's gonna continue adding that repository. And then if we head back over to this website, we can see there are some more options. So AppStream metadata. We're gonna to want to give this a copy and paste so then we can install these RPM Fusion packages through our graphical package manager if we do so choose. So paste that in hit enter and you can see here it's going to do the AppStream data for both free and the non-free repos hit enter should take no time at all i'm going to go ahead and import that key say yes and there we go so now for example if i go back over to our software center here just like before and i'm to search up obs we can see we now have obs studio the live streaming and video recording software now there's still a slight problem. If we go up here, we can see this is from RPM Fusion Free, and that's the only option. Now I prefer the flat pack of this. Flatpak is enabled by default in Fedora, but it's Fedora's stripped down version of uh, available Flatpaks. We're gonna want to enable the Flat Hub repository. And to do that, it's just another simple command. We're gonna want to paste in this. This is Flatpak, remote add, if it does not exist, which it shouldn't if this is a fresh install, flathub.org and the flathub repo. So go ahead and hit enter. It's gonna ask us for our password, authenticate that. So now if we go back over here again to our software center, and then we once again search for something like OBS, select this package, head over here, we can now see we have the flathub option available to us, which is awesome. Now the next thing isn't completely necessary. It's just a little, tip I like to do. Now, I already did this before I switched this over. Right here, that Fedora I just highlighted, that is our host name. Now, when you install Fedora, it doesn't give you the option to change your host name like most uh, Linux distributions do, so you're gonna have to do that manually. And to set the host name, we're just gonna paste in this command right here, sudo hostname ctl set hostname, and then from there, you could call it whatever you want. So I'm gonna call this like a Fedora-VM instead of just Fedora, so I know that this is a virtual machine. Hit enter, and that's it. You won't see it right away, but next time you reboot your system, right here, instead it will say Fedora VM. For me anyways, you could do, call it really whatever you want. Now, another big problem with Fedora is the media codex. It does not really come with much, and you might even think your sound card is broken if you don't really have too much experience with it. You install Fedora, you go to YouTube, and it, the sound's not working. Now, luckily that is a pretty easy fix. What we're gonna do is he go back over to the RPM Fusion website. Right here, we have multimedia post install. So all we're gonna want to do is copy and paste these two commands and we will be good to go when it comes to our uh, multimedia codex. So head over here, give that a paste, enter, and then you could see everything it's going to install right here. We have the core components such as FFmpeg and a uh, G streamer and all these various libraries that it's gonna need, including the uh, X264 libraries, a bunch of good stuff. So we're gonna say yes to continue with that installation. And you can see even with that little DNF configuration change that we've done, um, it, it's going substantially faster than it would have otherwise, at least based on my personal experiences. So now we want the sudo DNF group update sound and video, head over here, paste that in, enter and we're gonna go yes. So now that is complete. If I head back over here, there are some additional repositories. Me, I never really find a reason to install the tainted repos or anything like that. 
not really necessary unless if you really needed it. And I've actually had issues in the past with this final command here. So unless if you really need something from here, I'd recommend you avoid this completely. So I believe that was six different things we've done thus far. And to make it an even seven, I'm gonna kind of cheat and tell you to go ahead, grab whatever software you need, make any configuration changes. Depending on your desktop environment, you may want to go ahead and grab some packages. So this is GNOME. This is the default desktop environment for Fedora. And if you are in GNOME, things I'd recommend you do is just search up GNOME in your software center. GNOME Tweaks is an essential one. So we're gonna to want to go ahead and give that an install. And then another essential one is the uh, extensions. So this right here, this green one, this is the main GNOME project application. So we could go ahead and give that an install. And I could have went with the flat pack if I wanted to. And then with these applications within GNOME, you'll be able to configure your system to better suit your workflow. For example, this application menu, which is already in here, from there, I could see all my apps through a categorized, more of a classic style list. And I do have a separate video that goes over some of my favorite extensions and some, uh, or how to install extensions. It's a really easy process. And of course that tweak tool we just added, if I search for tweaks, this is where you can do things such as adding a uh, minimize button if you want to. So under window title bars, minimize, maximize. That's something I usually do so that I can actually minimize windows and I can reopen them easily by hitting the Windows key and clicking on them. And of course, not just things for your specific desktop environment, go through, scan all the cool applications that you can, and get what you need for what you want to do on your computer. Now with that, I do have some other videos going over like my top 10 favorite applications for specific years, top favorite CIL utilities, top GNOME extensions. I'm gonna be linking below to a bunch of different resources to help you discover some software you might be interested in, as well as like my favorite KDE Plasma widgets and things if you're in a completely different desktop environment. But no matter what desktop environment you're in, all the steps in this video are relevant and I do recommend you do them. So with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely fantastic day. Uh, everything I did mention, including all the commands I copy and pasted will be linked down below. With all that, have a beautiful day and goodbye.